Hey, this is Linda Green. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the first problem on recitation two, the TA warm-up problem, and then I'll give you a few hints on some of the other problems. This video is intended for students who were not able to attend recitation in person today. So here we're asked to find the limit as x goes to zero from the right of e to the one over x over x. Well, first thing I like to do in the face of a limit is just try plugging in. But when I plug in in this problem, things go horribly wrong. First, I have to do e to the one over zero. Well, that doesn't make sense. And then to make matters worse, I have to divide that by zero. Can't divide by zero. So plugging in here is not gonna work. So instead, I'm gonna try to use reasoning about positive and negative numbers and big and small numbers to evaluate this limit. So as x goes to zero plus, I'm gonna start by thinking about what happens to this piece, one over x. One over x is gonna go through very big positive numbers. That's because if I divide by a very small number, a number close to zero, like 0 0.1, 0 0.001, I get a very big number. And here I'm approaching zero from the right, so I'm dividing by small positive numbers. Positive over positive is positive, therefore I'm getting big positive numbers. In other words, one over x is heading towards infinity, positive infinity. All right, that's all good, but I actually want to figure out what e to the one over x goes to. So e to the one over x, well, one over x is going through big positive numbers. When I take e to a big positive number, I get an even bigger positive number, right? Like e to a million would be super huge, right? You can also think of it in terms of the graph of e to the x. If you plug in big positive numbers to e to the power, you get even bigger positive numbers. So e to the one over x as x goes to zero plus is also going to infinity. So the numerator here is going to infinity and the denominator is going to zero. All right, but let's keep reasoning some more. So in the numerator, we said we had, we're getting big positive numbers. On the denominator, as x is going to zero from the positive side, the denominator um, is going to zero from the positive side because just x. In other words, i.e., it's going through small positive numbers. So when I take the numerator over the denominator, the limit as x goes to zero plus of e to the one over x over x, that's going to be big positive numbers over tiny positive numbers. Well, positive over positive is going to be a positive, but since it's a big number divided by a tiny number, dividing by a tiny number is making that big number even bigger. So these are going to be big positive numbers. And so my expression is ultimately going to infinity. That's the end of the TA warm-up problem. Now I want to talk just a little bit about some of the student problems. For problem number two, I encourage you to try plugging in first just to get oriented of what kind of problem it might be. When I plug in three on the denominator, I get zero. When I plug in three in the numerator, however, I do not get zero. It's not a zero over zero kind of limit. It's a number over zero kind of limit. So that'll help you decide whether you want to use the conjugate trick, because this does look something you could do a conjugate, or if you want to use uh, things sort of like talking about big numbers, small numbers, positive, negatives, like we did in the previous problem. Deciding whether it's a number over zero versus a zero over zero can help you decide which method to use. On this next problem, the limit of an absolute value over a quadratic, once again, I'd try plugging in first. When you plug in, I think you're going to get zero on the top and zero on the bottom. So you might want to start out using some of those tricks from last week. 
getting rid of the absolute value sign by thinking about whether 6 minus 2x is positive or negative, and then using one of the algebra tricks from last week, including things like factoring and canceling, adding together fractions, conjugate trick, etc. For this last problem, we're trying to find a number a such that this limit that has a's in it, the, uh, the, as x goes to negative 2, exists as a finite number. When you plug in negative 2 on the top and the bottom, on the bottom, you'll notice that you get 0. So I want to think about what kind of number you would have to get on the top in order for the limit to exist as a finite number. Because the 0 on the bottom, if the number on the top, once you'd solve for a and plugged in x equals negative 2, if that number were like 5 and you plugged in and got 5 over 0, would you have any hope of getting a finite number in that case? Or if you plugged in and you got like negative 13 over 0, is that the kind of limit that could possibly give you a finite number? So think about what this numerator would have to be when you plug in negative 2 in order for this ratio to have any hope of being a finite number, and that will help you solve for a. The rest of the problems are extra problems, and I'll post the solutions as usual after recitation is due.